words you add while you're not popping out. All right, y'all. This is the one. It's going to work this time, no doubt. Hands down. This is the one where it's going to happen. Attempt number eight. Ain't no doubt about it. This is the one where it's going to work. No doubt. One. Oh, it got to work. Booyah! <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Bro, listen, listen, I tried, I did everything, bro, I got like five phones. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Hey, Get listen, body, all I want to know is I appreciate you bringing me on your show after <laughs> all the technical difficulties. Yo, thank you, man. First of all, everybody, listen up, man. I deleted half of the videos that we done tried, I deleted them already. But I tried at least, I tried at least seven times on my page. He tried about four times on his page. So yeah, I know, uh, I know. We we here, man. All right, we we finally <laughs> here. So this is take number seven. Cut. Hey, all listen. Right, hey, um, we, I think we went down in history, so it's all good. <laughs> I think I think uh, we straight yeah. now. Yeah, we good now. We good now. So man, all right. So uh, as y'all know, how the art and talk show goes. I will be doing the art, and he will be doing majority of the talking. Right now, I'm painting one of my homeboys who is playing ball. So or I'm actually done. I gotta write his name and stuff like that. So that's all I'm working on. So easy. Y'all can't see y'all screen. Screen messing up. The screen messing up, twin. Y'all can't see. Whose screen you can't see? Hopefully, it's not messing up. Hopefully, that ain't another Man, thing. Man, I gotta see you. You can. I see you too. So hopefully, it ain't, ain't it. But um. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing this painting. Today we're talking about entrepreneurship. Today we're talking about business. Um, and yeah. we're also talking about my young brother. Um, he is uh entrepreneur himself, he's CEO of Youngest in Charge, YNC, and he's gonna tell you more about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you introduce yourself to the people. All right. Uh, well, I, well, first off, I don't want to get too in depth with it because we do have a documentary coming out um right. next year. So I don't want to tell you too much about it. I just want to give y'all a sneak peek and um, something brief about it. But um, so I'm going to go, you know, uh, I started it when I was at Clark Atlanta University. Um, I was a, uh, I was playing football. You know, I tore my Achilles and I wanted to, I just didn't want to be looked at as just an athlete. So um, I had to figure out a way to like separate myself from everybody else. So I started the brand. And what a lot of people don't know is when I was in the seventh and eighth grade, I had this job called Tree Trust. And um, our, our, our leader, he asked us like, you know, what do you want the group name to be? And I was like, I'm the only one that spoke up. And I was like, youngest in charge. So then we went with that name for two years, youngest in charge. So then um, I never, you know, wanted a clothing line or anything like that. You know, I wanted a sports drink because I was an athlete. So, um, I um I wanted a sports drink. So when I when I first when I figured out you know that I wanted to really push the brand, I made the logo, and I was just showing it to people. And a lot of people like they didn't like it. You know it was ugly. And um I had a yeah. best friend, and he was like you know just start a clothing line, and I was like nah I I don't want to. He was like nah bro you got to you fly. I'm like nah bro I want a sports drink. So. Yeah. He was like, no, you got to start a clothing line. So I'm like, all right. So I got my logo and I took it to Mr. Dad's Life. And um, I'm yeah. like, hey, bro, I need a, a few shirts. And when I brought it to him, he knew it was a hit right away. He told me to keep pushing. He saw the vision before anybody else. So I think I did maybe seven to 10 shirts. And I started showing it to people. And people was like, no, nah, we don't like it. It's ugly. Why is your logo crying? Like, we don't like that. Is that a fist? What is it? So now I'm going to go in and tell you exactly what my logo is, as you can see on my shirt. So it's not a fist, which, you know, we do represent. But it's not a fist. It's a four. It's like an Android charger. It's four bars. So, you know, four bars represents how many children my mother has, you know. And the name represents, one, my last name is Young. And two, I'm the youngest out of four kids. And then the two tears represents the two times in my life where, you know, I really struggled and, you know, 
it was hard for me. Um, the first one was when my nephew dad passed away and he asked me to take care of his son. The second one is, is the second tier is when I tore my Achilles and couldn't play football anymore. So back to the first tier of, you know, my nephew dad passing away, that made me realize and you step up and become a better man to show my nephew that, you know, things has to be, thing, things has to go, things have to go differently. Um, and the second tier is, you know, when I was playing ball, I was really cocky and, and, you know, I didn't care about school or anything like that because I knew I was going to the NFL. But when I tore my Achilles, it made me realize that, you know, I'm more than an athlete. You know, I, I have to be more than an athlete because I'm at a disadvantage right now. I don't have that sports behind me anymore. I'm just like everybody else. So that's what that is right there. And then back to, you know, a lot of people said they didn't like it. So my mother, um, when, I, when I brought it to her, I'm telling her, you know, they don't like the brand and stuff like that. And I want to give up. And my mother said, you know, never let anybody tell you what you can and can't do. So if a lot of you guys follow me, you know that I like wearing all white. When I go out anywhere, it's all white. So me and my mother was like, you know, just start wearing all white with everything. And I think I got the shirts maybe May of 2014. And no, I made them February 2014. And I came home, which I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, came home. And um, I just started wearing all white and it just blew up from there. And everybody started telling me how they liked it. And, you know, over the years, things had to get revamped. You know, as time go on, trends change. Um, at first, I used to wear, you know, big logos on the front of my shirt. And as you get older, most adults don't like big logos. You know, polo, they don't have big logos. They have the small ones. So I had to change up exactly how my logo was. Um, and I have five, five, six different logos, you know, just for people like different things. So, you know, that's a little bit of, of that. Um, I also just recently had a billboard put up on Lake and Hawatha, which is right by the light rail in Minneapolis. Um, and like I said before, we have a documentary coming out. I don't know exactly which date it's going to be because it's still in the works, but it definitely will be out. No, no, no. Yeah, I, said, I, I said, okay, go ahead. I said, I got a documentary coming out next year, but I just don't ex don't know the exact date. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, so I mean, documentary gonna be called. I was up there helping shoot. Now you know what I'm saying. Documentary gonna be called when that thing drop. Um, that's but, but but tell people tell tell the people what the what the um. What the what the trial and tribulations is, is the clothing line in, in specific, as in like you know hometown like being local with with it and whatnot. Okay, so it's it's kind of weird for me because um, it's it, it's it's sad to say, but I got more support when I was in Atlanta than when I came home, um, and I feel like when you do have a business, it's always good that you you should you need to support home first you know i shouldn't get more support from in atlanta than minnesota minneapolis because i was born and raised here i played football wow. here you know I, I went to high school here um and that's far as like the support i just really feel like that if anyone is doing something in your town in your state in your city that you should support them no matter how big or small they are because you're going to look up and they're going to be really big and you're going to wish that you supported them. Like Nike, Adidas, um, FUBU, for example. Um, they used to always, the man, uh, I forgot his name, he's on Shark Tank. Um, he used to take, uh, he gave LL Cool J different shirts, but he used to take the shirts back and take this, uh, unstitch it and wash the shirts and stitch it back, you know? Um, and, you know, he didn't have a lot of money. So far as, like, the trials, that's what the supporting, but chopping, as, chopping a little bit, bro. I'm chopping. Can you hear me now? You chopping up a little. Yeah, I, yeah can you hear me good. now? All right, and far as you know, the funds behind it, when you start a clothing line, it, it's not cheap. You know, it's not cheap. It's gonna, it's gonna take you're gonna lose a lot of money. No one knows you, so you're gonna have to give stuff away for free. You're gonna have to. 
you have to like no one's gonna go out and spend fifty dollars on a hoodie and they don't know you because I'm not. You know, I have to see things first before I spend my money. We all work hard for our money. So when starting a brand, you gotta put that in the back of your back of your mind that you will lose money. You will lose money. It, it, you will. And it, it's gonna take a lot of money, a lot of support, and you're gonna need a team, you know, to build up what you're trying to do. And what I've learned is you can't do it alone. It you you need someone to help you. Cause you doing it alone, you're out by yourself. And the more people that have your clothing on, the more people that's supporting you, the more people that's helping you, more people are gonna know. Right, yeah. Right, right. yeah, yeah. And, and, and what, do you, what do you think about, you know, a lot of people who try to start their own uh, clothing line or their own business alone, just being to be an entrepreneur, whatever it is that you do, what do you think about, or how should people react to criticism? What do you think about that? Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I at first I, I didn't react well, but um, like I said, I played sports, so you know I was always at a disadvantage. You know, I was I was a small corner, and people wow. really didn't believe me anyway, so wow. they were always telling me things that I couldn't do. So, like you said, with starting a business, you have to wow. be ready for people to critique you. You you have to know if if, if everybody likes your thing. Your, your stuff's not good. Nobody's going to always like it. So you have to be able to take that and right. run with it. If somebody tells you something's ugly, you, it's going to be somebody that's going to tell you it's nice. So you got you to gotta decipher which ones you really want to listen to. But right. all criticism is good. No matter if you feel it is at that time, you're going to look back like I did and be like, dang, that was ugly. Like someone told me my hoodie that I had a big logo on was ugly. I got mad right. about it. But now that I look, at it now, I look back on it. That was an adult that was telling me it was ugly. No adults wear big logos on their shirts, so I right. should have listened to him at first and start to 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 minimize how big it was. But like I said, I wasn't taking self criticism that well, so I would just like shut down and be like, "Oh no, they're hating. They're hating." Like no. Everyone's not hating on you. Just because someone tells you it's ugly or they don't like it, they're not hating. They're just telling you that they don't like it. They don't prefer to wear that. You know, and you have to be like, okay, you don't prefer to wear it. But if you don't, it's 10 people that will wear it. So. Right, right, right. No, I, I agree. Like, cause at the end of the day, you can't please. I tell everyone all the time, you can't please everybody. Everyone yep. is not going to like or love your, your, your work. So the same thing when I was doing with Dash Life, when I first started with it, that's life, like, you know, it was always like either, oh, the spelling's wrong. Like, that's not how you spell mm -hmm. that. Or, you yeah. know, and I'm, hear I'm hearing that from the older crowd. And, you know, uh, uh, oh, yeah, the, like the logo, oh, the logo's too bland. Oh, it's too simple. You, you, you need to switch it up or woo, woo. I'm like, look, man, I, and the thing about it is I knew what my audience was. I right. knew who I was targeting. I knew, you know, and, and that's kind of how I actually blew it up. And also, I, I was my, I was my, my clothing line. I was my, you know, I was always wearing it regardless of yep. what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I was, yeah. I, I was a firm believer in myself. Yeah. So that criticism also, like, I took, for, I took the good thing for what it was. Like, as a hey man, you should switch it up or you should, you know, you should do this. But a lot of times, nine times out of ten, I... I took uh, everything with a grain of salt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't let it hurt me. Like, it's like, all right, that's my... I mean, I just said, that's life. When you don't like it, all right, that's life. Like, keep moving. Right, And yeah. I think that's kind of how you got you to gotta, you gotta do it when you... Especially when you're starting off, because you... Yeah. Because, like, wine see you, like, that's your baby. Like, that's yeah. life for me back then was my... It's still my... Like, it's not my right. baby. Like, I created it. I made the shirts. I made the designs. I made all the logos. So you have that kind of you're entitled to really like defend your product, defend your right. service. So our service. So it's like, you know, you kind of, you kind of will get in your emotions. But I think now growing up now, I always tell the young, young entrepreneurs, like, look, you're going to get criticized regardless. But like, there's right. always going to be hated. There's always going to be someone who's not rocking with you, but stay positive, take it for what it is and try to, you know, don't try to please them, but try to see, see how you could improve whatever case may be. So, and and, and, and to touch on that as well is um, depending on where you live at, you know, I know that my mm -hmm. brand, for some reason, 
it resembles on the East Coast. And like I'm for I market not yeah. int uh, intentionally, but I market out there. The things that I like to wear is more marketed out there. So you got to take that too. Like, okay, if yeah. you're trying to sell hoodies, sweatpants, and furs and pea coats, you can't market to Florida with that type of thing you're trying to push. You can't market to California because it's too hot out there. So if they tell you that they don't like it, it's not because it's ugly. It's just they're not used to seeing that. So they're just like, oh, I've right. never seen this before, so I really don't like it. So they really can really like it, but they're just not used to seeing that. So it's like, oh, first instance, no. I don't like it. Yeah, no, you you absolutely right, and and I and I yeah. learned that because you know I lived in Buffalo and I went to my JUCO in Buffalo. So yeah, like, yeah. I went up there. That's my first real experience of like up north and how they how they how they maneuver when I went to yeah. where. And up there at the time in Buffalo. They always had these champion, these big champion sweatshirts. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, I first off, I ain't never seen, I ain't never seen a champion sweatshirt like that. Uh, you know, and because they don't sell that in Florida. They don't right, right. say they don't sell champion, and not I'm not knocking champion, but it's like the the only champion that I see in Florida is a tank top or a t-shirt. Right. Never, I never seen no sweatshirt that had the big champion logo on it, but that right. was it was heavy out there in Buffalo. Right. And it was more sold in the stores, but it's because Champion knew or knows, hey, right. Buffalo people are gonna buy this or up north people are gonna buy this. So we're yeah. not gonna go ahead and market that. That's the top that's the top sales in Buffalo. So right. it's just kind of learning off of that, like learn your audience, learn your location. Like my city, city of Kissimmee, in Atlanta, Georgia, West Side area, East Side area, like when it came right. to that's life, I knew that those are my heavy sales were at. So if I'm going to set up and do an event for sales, I'm going to go ahead and set up there, you know what I'm saying? Because right. I know where my audience is at. Like, I know that right. if I'm in Kissimmee, Florida, I'm going to put Kissimmee, Florida on a That's Life t-shirt. Or Atlanta, right. I'm going to put Atlanta on that shirt. So that's related right. to Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? So it's all about kind of knowing but, your audience, which I think is key. Yeah, that too, though. But I mm -hmm. also would say that if, if, if you're out in, let's say you're out in Florida or Cali, and you can still put different cities on different shirts because, especially at Clark, it was so many different people from Chicago, from right, every different right, state. Right. So, so if if you put your your city, they're gonna ask you like, "Dang, can you put Fargo, North Dakota, on here?" And you go, "Oh yeah." So you got to be able to maneuver around things that people want. You can't right. just stay stuck on, "Oh, all I want to put on my shirt is Minneapolis, Minnesota, because this is where I'm from." When Nine out of right. ten, you really don't all. Your state is not only thing. The your state isn't the only market that you're in. You got to look at every different state, right. every different city, every different race. You got to see who's going to buy from you and who isn't. Certain right. things, Especially. white. What are you about right. to say? Like certain no, things no, that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> certain things like. Black people may not want to wear certain things. White people may not want to wear. So you have to be able to market them. And it's not you selling out or anything, but you have to know that you have to be able to sell to everyone. You have to know that if you want to make shoes and, and you're trying to sell to a, a, a five, six, seven year, seven year old kid, your shoes can't be $180 because the mother's not going to buy that because her kid is consistently growing. You have to know your audience. You have to know what will and won't sell. You have to know what colors will and won't sell. You have to know what colors people look good in. Red, everyone likes red. Blue, blue hits. Wow. White, white hits. You know, you have to know. A lot of people don't like bright colors. Most men don't like bright colors. So when you're when you're marketing, you have to know that black and white, white and gray, um, navy blue and white, red and white, black and white, Stuff like that will market to men. Me, I like funny colors. Everyone's not like me, so I can't base me off of that's life because he's not going to wear a, a pink, orange, and yellow fur. I will. So I have to sit back. <laughs> I have to sit back and, 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 and ask myself. You have to honestly be real with yourself when, you, when you're doing it. If you know you're about to drop some BS, 
you have to tell yourself like, oh, you can't expect too much. When you drop, you got to be like, okay, um, this is some BS, and I'm gonna push it anyways. But I really don't know if it's gonna hit. Um, I know I had a conversation with uh, Dad's Life a, a few weeks ago, and he was telling me that the amount of money you spend, you have to market that as well. So if you're spending a thousand dollars. You got to put that time in to make that thousand dollars work. You can't spend a thousand dollars and sit back and think it's going to market itself because you spent a thousand dollars because no one knows how much money you really spend on that product. Right. You can make it look nice and only spend 15, 20 dollars and people still won't buy it. But if you have a shirt that's black and white, like I said, and you spend hours, hours, hours pushing that shirt people will buy it because they consistently keep seeing that shirt and keep seeing it being marketed in the right way. Right, right, yeah, yeah. nah. It's, 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 I always tell people that, man, like, you can't, like, when it comes to these paintings, like, if I paint for four hours, if I paint for something for four hours, I'm on social media for four hours promoting that, responding, tagging people, whatever case may be, to go ahead and get that sold, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, luckily, Luckily, I got a good, a pretty good following now to where I can post, post. And I don't have to be on there as long, and I can make the sale quick. But right. that's what you, the amount of work you put in, the amount of work you put in, and any entrepreneur aspect, whatever is making products or giving, or giving out services, it got to be the same amount of marketing. So you got to yeah. imagine if you, if you're you marketing do. something for four hours long, like it's gonna get to somebody. Somebody got to catch it. So it's like. You, that's the only Somebody way you catch have it. the most amazing product. You got the most amazing product, but it's just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? It's not marketed. So you have to, it's right. key that you market. And that's why I'm trying to help out a lot of the uh, older businesses, old, old, older business owners who are like in the downtown area and different businesses around because they don't really know how to be tech savvy with social media. They don't know how to use a new wave of marketing. They, right. They're still doing the guerrilla marketing, knocking on doors going into right. the newspapers and, you know, magazine ads and stuff like that, which is cool because that's a still a form of marketing, but it's a new way, so you always got to follow the trends. But, um, but nah, definitely, I think marketing is key in any aspect, and the more people you can get to market for you, word of right. mouth is always the best marketing. The more people can do that for you, then that's when you really up on up, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that that's that's definitely true. And one thing I um when I first started, I didn't touch on that. Um, it was this woman, and um, <clears throat> she was tell she does she does hair, and um she was telling me yeah. you never dummy down your prices for anyone because it's somebody out there right. that will pay no matter what. Like it's somebody right. out there that will pay for what you what you what you're yeah. marketing, and you have to know exactly what your brand is like. If you feel like your brand is a designer brand, then that's how you market it. A designer brand isn't fifteen twenty dollars right. shirts. A designer brand is one hundred and eighty dollars, two hundred dollars shirts, and you have to know who you're gonna sell that to. You know, like exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Nah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Uh, uh, what you, what you feel about how you feel about <laughs> where people be like. Oh man, like your your partners or whatever, be like, oh yeah, hey, bro, let me let me get a, let me get a discount, man. I'm your part, I'm your boy. Okay. Like, what's what's good? What you feel? <laughs> How you feel with people? <laughs> so. Like, so I, I honestly, like, you know, for, like I said, when, when, when you first start, you have to give them shirts up. You have to give them hats yeah. up. Okay. But as a friend, as a friend, as a brother, as a sister, as a mother, as a father, whatever the case may be with that connection with that person, if you want to yeah. see them succeed, you would never be like, let me get, let me get. What do you mean, let right. you get? Did, 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 when I made these shirts, did they let me get them for free? No, they didn't. Right. So <laughs> if, if you're asking me, let me get, go ask Jordan, let you get some shoes for free or at a discount. Go ask Nike, let you get. Yeah. You can't always be like, let me get, because it's like everything costs money. Nothing's free. So you right. asking me, let me get, it's showing me how much you really care. Because if you care, you're not asking me, let me get. You're saying, how much for this piece? I want that piece, specifically that piece, and I will pay, no matter what you're saying. Right, exactly. Nah, I agree. Like, that's one thing, like, in the beginning, like, you already know how...
story was with the Dots Life. Yep. Like I, I gave out some shirts for free. Yep. You feel me? At the uh the very, very beginning, I gave out 40 shirts for free. But that was a marketing tip. You did like that was a marketing aspect, how I how mm-hmm. I was out there. Um but like the thing about the thing the, the thing that really made me uh respect the people who gave who paid full price was like my family. Like my family would pay full price of whatever I was selling. Like my cousin, my aunt, my uncles, all that, and my and my closest right. people now, they be like, yo, I'm paying full price for you. And if my family doing that, right? My closest ones right. doing that. If my homeboy coming to me and be like, yo, let me get a let me get a uh thing for for free or I have like, nah, like my mama paying for a price, my dad paying for and I'm telling them like, nah, mom, like that, you good. Like, nah, like nah, you straight, like y'all family. And they'll be like demanding me, no, I'm paying for a price because it's a business. And it's because yep. they understand and respect the fact that you're an entrepreneur and they respect that the fact that you're putting in all this work. So yeah. those are the people that you really want to keep in your circle. And those are the people who are gonna market, and those are the people you would want to work for you in. Those are the yep. people that you would you actually would show love to if yeah. you know you was to give anything, it'll be to them because they pay your full right. off rip. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. But yeah. That's how I always move. I always pay full price for everything, bro. Yeah, and, and, and that's how and I feel know, too, because like like it's like you want a handout. It's like like I said, nothing's free. You can't always expect to let me get. Like, what do you mean let me get? Like I had someone tell me he was in a different state. He's like, oh yeah, your clothing line to boom down here. Send me a package, and I and I and I'll and I'll I'll rock it. It's like I can rock it myself. Like, what do you mean send you a, a package right, for right. free? Like, you're not gonna pay for anything. I'm just sending this to you, and 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 and, and, and you're just gonna right. wear it. Like, like no, like you gotta give me something for it. I can't just send you something right. for free. Like now, it, but, but it also depends. So when people, some people, when certain people ask for things for free. You can also yeah. go look at like their Instagram now. If they have a lot of followers, yeah, then you give those market. things. Yeah, that's a market yeah. thing. You 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 give those things away for free. But if it's a regular degular person and they're not really doing anything, I'm not giving you anything because like how is this benefiting me? Like when you're running a business, nah, exactly. I, you, you sometimes well you have to be selfish because it's like how are you going to grow if if you're not being selfish? If you're not yeah. being selfish, you're giving things away. You have to you have to step right. you have to step aside from if you're feeling like you're selfish because for the longest I've always felt like dang if I don't do this and this people are gonna look at me a certain way but no matter what they're always gonna look at you a certain way because of no that's what. how life is. So yeah, nah, for sure. Nah, yeah. Like, you, you, I always, I always, and I was always, I'm always like that giving nice person always trying yeah. to look out for folk like you know what I'm saying, but. You start to learn, folks will start to walk over you, bro, business yep. wise or personally wise. And then yeah. it's like, you know what, nah, like, put your foot down, like, nah, you're gonna have to pay me full or you'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't you're right, worry about right, it. right. Like, it's like, you gotta learn that. But I think that comes with trial and error. Like, it comes with yep. like, trying to look out for folks. And then people, you just start to feel like, damn, I feel like I'm getting ran over. I, damn, I feel like they, they, they trying to uh, take advantage of me. And then once you do that, you know, it, it's 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 a uh, sky's the limit, then. But some people already got that mentality going in. Some people ain't that nice, and some people just automatically just t- now nah, they rule with it full price. Now nah, I don't got no homeboys type deal. So sometimes it works in your favor, because sometimes when you look out, they'll look out for you. But you gotta know who you you gotta know who you gotta know who you looking out for. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta know what they're doing it for. You gotta know what their agenda is sometimes. Right. Yeah. And that, and that's true. You gotta know you gotta know people in the intentions. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But um, you have to know people with t- intentions because everyone don't everyone doesn't have good intentions, and everyone doesn't want to see you do good. And just because what I what I've learned recently is just because someone shows up to your event really doesn't mean that they want to see you do good. They could just they could just come just to be there, just to see if you're going to do good or, or what you're talking about is actually right. true. So right. that's how you got to look at, you got you to you know how to decipher how real people are and, and if, 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 if what they're doing is really genuine or not. Correct. Nah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And sometimes that's very difficult because it can be your closest people 
that yeah. that have hidden agendas. You know what I mean? So yeah, a lot of times it's, it's just like trying to figure out, and that takes time to really figure out who's for you and who's not for yep. you. Especially business wise, because yep. you know a lot of time when I first started Bass Life, it yeah. was it was a lot of people was on the train, like a lot of people was rocking with it. But then when I fell short, you know what I mean? Like folk really wasn't there. Like when folk wasn't getting paid no more because I I was going through something. Like I couldn't make the shirts because the machine was was down or whatever case may be. Like folks started just to move differently. You start to people like who really real, who really was really real with it and stay stay with me. You feel me? One not so. I mean, it takes time. It takes trials and tribulations in the earlier stage to figure out who really for you, what, how you want to move, you, how you want to uh, maneuver your business, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, bro. But then, like, like I and like I like I learned and um, like I talked to different people about this. Um, mm -hmm. it takes time. Like this business process takes time. Um, I was watching a Versace video, and he wanted to give up. And it, all it takes is one piece for you to be successful. It's not going to be multiple shirts, hats, hoodies, shoes. It's that one piece that's going to catch someone's attention. When I watched that Versace uh, documentary, he made a dress for his sister. And that dress was that piece that made him take off. I'm not sure exactly how long it took him, but it can be... T 10 years, it's just, it's, it may not be your time. You just have to just stay grinding and just stay true to who you are. And if, if this is something that you really want, you will push it. Um, And I know for me and a lot of my other friends that rap, that paints, that does hair, whatever the case may be, their own boss, that if you never felt like you wanted to quit and you never felt like giving up, you don't love it enough. Because if, if, if you don't feel that way, it's not hurting you bad enough. And, 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 and if you're not waking up at night, if you're not in tears, if you're not spending that money, you don't want it bad enough. If, if you really love it, you will sit back and be like, damn, I want to give up. I want to give up. If you're not nervous about this, this live video, I talk to Alvin all the time on the phone. That's like my big brother. But I was nervous. Why? Because I was prepared. One thing Jordan said was before a game, he was always nervous because he was prepared. You know, if you don't love something enough, you're not going to be nervous. If you don't love something enough, you're not going to want to give up. You're going to be like, oh, I don't care. Whatever. And on to the next. But if you really love it, if you truly love something, you will put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and you will want to give up eventually. I'm not saying that give up. But I'm telling you that you will feel that way because it's something that's hurting you and that you want so bad and you feel like you can't have it. So you just want to just say, forget it and move on. But just stay true to what you're doing. And I promise you, you will get to where you're trying to go. Nah, I'm there for real, bro. Like, yeah, like, well, folks don't understand, like, when people be seeing me, they be they don't be knowing the real, real groundwork. Like, they see me working, but they don't be knowing, like, the real, real, like, right, right, right. Doing. And then you get it comes to a point where it's like, dang, because I be in here like, man, I'm done, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, because so, I get so overwhelmed. Yeah, <laughs> I get yeah. so overwhelmed with so much, with so much everything I got going on, bro. And it's really just me. Like, folk really thought I had a team when I was doing it. That's like, right, right. I seen it. I seen it. I was making all the shirts. I was designing all the logos. I know. I, was, I know you. So, you know, you know, it's like it's like when folks don't don't see that, they just see that end result. They don't really understand what it takes to even do, you know, everything that we're doing. And that's why you always, I always try to do like a mental check in with everybody because mentally, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mentally alone, that's a lot to do for one person. All the entrepreneurs out there, you know, when you when you're entrepreneur in the beginning, it's a lot to do on your own. You're not gonna have a team. A lot of people just don't have a team. A lot of people just don't have that support system. And yeah. um, I mean, funds play. It's, it's, funds it's, play a, it's, my bad. Go ahead. Yeah, my bad. Fun, yeah, funds play a big role too. Now you get. I was like, fun, funds play a big role too. Like you don't have much money. It's just you. You dolo. You trying to figure things out. You know, and you're just trying to make it. Like mentally, you you go through a lot. So yeah, you know, mental chess. Yeah, like 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 PC said, mental chess is necessary. Like you need to 
you need to be able to kind of step back too, like yourself, like yep. you start working sometimes, step back and figure out, all right, man, I'm moving too fast. And that's why, like, for me, yeah. I think, like, the way the universe worked, the way God worked, like, I was right. working so hard that I got in that, like, the uh, the fire accident or whatever, that fire accident yep. slowed, me slowed me down. Because, like, I was really just, I was on it, bro. Like, I was like a robot, right. you know what I'm saying? So I feel like, right. I, I know me, like, I wasn't going to stop. I wasn't even stop. Like I, I was like emotion. I was emotionally detached from everything, but I was just working, yep. working, working. So it's like mentally, I was also like, man, I think those things that those accidents I began in, like that jump, be God be telling me to slow down because yep. you know, yep. if you got that mentality, like you just you kind of forget, you know, you kind of forget. But that's how you know you love something. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, how you know really, that's really for you. you know what I mean? Right, and I. No, I, I I definitely hear that you gotta you gotta slow down sometime and you know um take some time for yourself you know not just you know just on the grind because yeah. if you're just working 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 you're gonna wear yourself out and you're not gonna even have that energy to put into what you really want to do so just take some some time to yourself and 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 figure things out. Yeah, nah, for real, for real, bro. I, I know, um. Dog. So, so this is off. This is off the topic, but or off the subject of what he's talking about. But um, growing up as a kid, what a lot of people don't know is we had our own clothing line. I think I discussed that with you uh, while we were shooting the documentary um, in February. So my mom, um, hey, you you froze, bro. Hold, hold you on, skip bro. It. Hold on, you, you chopped up at the end. I can't hear you at the end. Can you hear me now? You good? You, you good I'm now? I'm chopping up. You chopping up. Right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. All yeah. right, so a lot of people don't know that we had our own clothing line when we were younger. Um, my mom used to always make yeah. us, uh, like, blue jean outfits, and um, we called it ghetto. Well, no, it was uh, BAP, 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 BAP uh, Black American Prince. And um, my mom wanted us to, like, rap. So <laughs> we all had like little rap names and uh and stuff like that. And uh we had like leather uh headbands with like the rhinestones on it. And uh my mom used to just she had like a hot glue gun and she used to just sit on her bed and just make us outfits and I'll go to school and like the little it was like these like oh, what are those uh I forgot the name of them, but it was like it was like just cut my skin. And I'll be like, dang, mom, like this outfit you made me is like cutting me. Like, you know, like, I don't like that. But um, but yeah, like I, I think it, it wasn't that my mom made the clothing line made me, you know, want to start the brand, but I, I I seen that that's what she that was her vision. So I guess that I'm just finishing up what she started with a different name. Yeah. So, but I mean, we we chopped it up. We talked about that uh, when we was doing the uh, part of the documentary, anyways. But like I said, y'all gonna know um, and see and hear about the brand more. I just gave y'all um, a little so, sneak peek. Um, yeah, next year, next year, I'm hey, it's got, gonna drop next year. It's gonna be crazy, bro. And, and then honestly, it's not gonna be this many technical difficulties trying to uh, <laughs> get the get the documentary done. Like we get this live, it was crazy. <laughs> No, Man, no, it was not, bro. It, was, it, was, it was nuts. But uh, any any other questions you got, big bro? Man, um, um, nah. Matter of fact, tell, first of all, let, yeah, definitely tell the people, tell the people what's next. Tell the people what's um, tell the people you're following your IG, your, your Facebook, everything like that. Before okay. Go, I got one last question, but tell us. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, my my Facebook is youngest in charge. Um, honestly, everything is youngest in charge. Honestly, let me look at my Snapchat real quick, cause um, I, I really be on Snapchat, but um, so my Snapchat is Mr. YNC Studio. Um, let me see IG, cause like I said, I really, for some reason, I, I really be on IG, but I do be on Facebook a lot. But um, so my uh, IG is youngest in charge underscore underscore clothing brand, and go ahead and follow that. But um, you said what do I have in yeah, store? I went in the website. The website. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, youngest in charge clothing brand dot com. Um, 
go ahead and shop. Shop till you drop. And, and, and my last, my last thing that I want, I want you to tell the people, uh, or or the young entrepreneurs that that'll be watching, what is the top three advice, or your top three advice to give to uh, an entrepreneur? Um, first, manage your money, because you're gonna always have an expense, no matter what. You have to know how to manage your money. Um, two, your time. Time is money. You gotta know how to manage your time. Um, if you're not managing your time and your money, you're gonna fail. You know, those are the two biggest things that people can't manage is money and time. Um, the third one honestly would be is never give up no matter what. Because if 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 like I said, if you truly want to do something, if you truly want something, then that's what you do. You never let someone tell you what you can and can't do. So your time, your money, and never give up would be my three biggest things to tell someone because you're going to experience all three of those. It may all be at once. It may all be in spurts, but you will experience all those money. I, I had to work two jobs just to put money behind my brand, you know, 15, 16 hour days, you know, um, I wasn't managing my time correctly, you know, and then I learned that, you know, you have to manage that time. You, 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 you have to budget your money. And like I told you, I wanted to give up, but those three things, if you stay true to that, you're going to be good. Well, all right. Um, my, I was my three, my three is, I would say managing money for sure. Money is, is key, how to manage it, how to budget it. Even if you don't have much money, managing it yeah. is, a, is a key thing because financials yeah. is key in any aspect of wherever, whichever level you are at, whether it's beginning, whether you're fully successful, you're still going to have to learn or know how to manage. Manage your time, cherish your time. Same yeah. thing as he was saying, the, your yeah. time is a, is a big thing. Don't give, if, if, you're, if you're just starting your entrepreneurship, don't give time to people who's not uh, supporting your entrepreneur, like uh, uh, whatever you're trying to get going on. Cause you're wasting time, man. You're not managing your time. You're not cherishing your time. So um, that's the thing. And thirdly, I would say, <laughs> I would say, I would say thirdly, believe in what you, don't forget about what you, the reason why you started your entrepreneurship. Don't yep. forget the main reason why you wanted to start doing whatever it is that you started to do. That's key because you, you'll get lost and people try to come in and, and try to alter your mission statement and everything you got going on. Stay true to yourself and what the first, your first reasoning of what you're doing, um, yep. what yep. you're doing and why you're doing it. Yep. So, um, but yeah, so, uh, I gotta go. He gotta go. We both busy. Um, <laughs> you know, I appreciate y'all tuning in. This is gonna be uploaded. My phone going off. But um, so it's all love. I appreciate y'all tomorrow. Not so, not tomorrow. Tonight at six thirty, I got another show um, with Miss Tommy. She's um, this will be uploaded, so you can go ahead, and we're gonna respond to the comments in the yeah. um, after I finish it. We're gonna yeah. we will respond, not vocally, but virtually all right so yeah, yeah. i'll y'all Bert, i'm gonna get over with you appreciate yeah. you bro much love facts i hey. love yeah all right bro love.